I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa, and by my authority and that of the entire university, give power to read and to do all that appertains to this degree. A glorious moment crowning what has been a life full of struggles and tribulations. I never dreamed of such a happy, happy and glorious day as this one. Growing up during the colonial period, the young Masharia lived far from his home in central Kenya's Ndakaini area in Moranga, herding cows in the Maasai land. When he came back home to Arusha, he found a smoldering heap of rubble where his family house once stood. He therefore went back to the bush with his Maasai friends as they continued heading their livestock, traversing long distances for two years until one day unknowingly they reached Thika town. <laughs> he broke off from his childhood acquaintances, the Hards boys, choosing to stay back in Thika to search for his family. For months he lived as a chokora. Hey! One day, a man he faintly remembered came to eat at the restaurant. As they talked, Macharia realized that this man was a friend of the family of, the, of another man called Ibrahim Mutaki, a businessman. Mr. Mutaki, in turn, took Macharia back home, where he was reunited with his family. We thank God. It was then that his education journey began. In 1954, he was enrolled to Standard One, a fairly grown boy. My older sister, Jerry, who is here with us today to witness this occasion, had to be married off to quite an elderly man to pay my school fees through primary and intermediate school. She repeatedly jokes that I was responsible for her not going to school. He eventually trained as a teacher at Kahuhia Training College. While teaching, he got the prestigious J.F. Kennedy and Tom Boyer U.S. Student Airlift Scholarships. But he had no money for his airfare. My father, having sold everything, could only get 1,200 shillings. And he could not get the 4,000 shillings that was required, so I was left with the last flight. And I went back home at Rakaini. He applied for the famous, then referred to JFK Tom Boyer Student Airlifts of 1959-61 to the USA and was accepted for the 1962 group. But the family could not raise the Kenya shilling, 4,000, required for the air ticket. The perilous 45-day trip across the Sahara was an experience Dr. Macharia will never forget. Even me, I wouldn't forget that one. <laughs> They ate and slept in the bus, never moving out except to answer the calls of nature. They finally arrived at Benghazi, a coastal port on the northern tip of Libya. And when I took the bus at a bus at a hotel, I believed that I'm being taken to Embakasi. <laughs> and thereafter, it took me 140 days to get to Seattle. When he arrived in Seattle, USA, there was no one to receive him, and so he stayed for a whole week at a bus station trying to figure out where to go, until by chance a childless couple took mercy on him and granted him accommodation throughout his study period in the U.S. But even then he had to raise his tuition fees while still supporting his siblings back at home. He would acquire two degrees in political science and accounting as well as a Master of Science in Accounting. Came back to Kenya in 1969, loaded with all these degrees, and got a job in the Ministry of Local Government as a provincial local government finance officer, supernumerary. I don't know what that means. He later worked with the ICDC, Industrial and Commercial Development Corporation, and the Kenya Industrial Estates. Then he tossed himself into the world of entrepreneurship. Madhu Paper was the only local manufacturer of tissue paper in Kenya. And in just a few years, he had saved the country millions of shillings in foreign exchange previously spent on imported tissue paper. Dr. Macharia stands tall as a media mogul who owns the biggest radio and television network in Kenya. I would say the biggest indigenous 
radio and television in Kenya. Citizen Radio Network has a combined listener audience estimated at 80% of all Kenyans. Citizen Television commands 55% of the market share in Kenya. You graduates can learn something just a little from me and try to copy a little of it. The story of Dr. S.K. Masharia's rise from grass to grace told to the 7,789 graduates, three quarters of whom will be seeking jobs in the already crowded job market. I have learned the need for courage, patience, and perseverance in one's life. Dr. Viju Ratansi was also honored with an honorary degree for her philanthropic work helping needy students, including dozens who are graduating today, through her foundation to pay their school fees. <laughs> Sylvia Chabet, Citizen Weekend.